Hi there, this is Jennifer McGuire, and I'm a guest here on Ellen Hudson's YouTube channel and blog. A few weeks ago, I did a video on my YouTube channel showing how to add foil to a stamped image. This technique is a lot of fun, very simple, so you can make a lot of cards at once. Many of you have emailed me showing me projects that you've created and that you really enjoy this technique also. However, I wanted to do another video just in case anybody out there is having difficulty with the technique and share some more tips with you. Now for this, you will need a laminator or a Heidi Swap mink machine. If you don't have those, you can also try an iron for this and see if that works for you. I know many of you have had success with that also. For today's cards, I decided to use some new stamp sets from Ellen Hudson and Julie Ebersol. There's a floral stamp set and also a sentiment. This is the floral stamp set and I actually used all of the images and I've arranged them onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card on the bottom two thirds of the card and added a sentiment to the top. So I've arranged them there to kind of plan where I want the stamping to be. Now I'm coming in with a large acrylic block and pressing right, uh, right down onto all of the images and I'm going to transfer them onto my acrylic block. This is a great way to kind of plan where all your stamping will happen once you ink it up and stamp on the paper. So now I'm going to ink this in all of these images up all at once with Versamark ink. This is a clear sticky ink that is perfect for heat embossing. First I have my four and a quarter by five and a half inch white cardstock piece. I'm putting some anti-static powder on it because you want to make sure that you don't get powder where you don't want it. You want to keep it nice and crisp and that anti-static tool is really helpful for that. If you don't have that, you could use a dryer sheet for anti-static purposes. So I've inked up my stamp with a Versamark and I'm going to stamp this right onto my card. Now you'll notice some of the stamped images are hanging off of the block, that's okay. I'm going to trim this down a little bit so it doesn't matter if the edges aren't perfect. Now you won't see the image at first because it is a clear ink. I'm going to press down very firmly just to make sure all the ink transfers. And then I'm going to add a super fine clear embossing powder. You could also use a white embossing powder for this if you would like to. But any kind of super fine powder would be great. This one is from WOW, but I also like the super fine powders from Ranger. So after I have this all on here, I'm going to go ahead and let my heat gun get good and warm. And then I'm going to heat set all of these images. Now to add the foil, you need to have your laminator good and hot. So I turned on my laminator and let it warm up for about 20 minutes because you want it to be nice and toasty. I am going to be using Thermo Webs Deco Foil. This is a really good quality foil, but there are lots of great ones on the market. Any kind of heat transfer foil will work. Now you'll see one side of it is matte and you want to put facing up on your project whatever the pretty side is. So here the shiny silver and then for the greeting I'm going to use the shiny gold and I'm putting this right over our heat embossed images. So I have the, gold, the silver over the flower and the gold over the sentiment and I'm putting it into a piece of typing paper, really thin typing paper folded in half. Now this is the laminator that I'll be using today. Any laminator should work for this technique. I let it get really good and hot and I'm going to feed this through my laminator with the folded edge first so that it doesn't get caught in the laminator. As this feeds through, it will add heat and pressure to the paper which causes the foil to stick to the embossing powder. In my previous video, I showed how I ran the cardstock with the embossed image and foil through without the carrier sheet, without that folded piece of typing paper and got good results. However, it depends on the embossing powder you use, the thickness of your cardstock, everything. So I encourage you, if the technique didn't work for you without the carrier sheet, to try it with the carrier sheet that you see here. Now in experimenting with this 80 pound cardstock and the images that I use and the foil and the laminator I used, I found that if I ran it through twice before removing the foil, I got better results. So I encourage you to experiment with what you have. If, it, if the foil isn't completely transferring to the heat embossed image, try using a lighter weight cardstock. There are many different things that you can try with these laminators and once you figure it out for your laminator and cardstock, you'll be thrilled with the results. So now I'm going to go ahead and remove the foil and check out those beautiful images. Now I will tell you with this technique, you're not going to get 100% perfect, delicate results. This is more of an artsy look. So you need to kind of pick some images that work for that. These flowers are perfect. 
Now I wanted to show you a, th a few more examples before we move on. I actually did this with some other color of foils. I have my heat embossed flowers on the bottom two thirds of this piece and I have that hello image towards the top. I'm putting turquoise foil with the pretty side facing up over the flowers and I'm going to put a royal blue foil over the word hello. So I'm carefully holding in place, folding that piece of typing paper over it, and then I'm going to run it through my laminator once again. Be sure to let your laminator get good and hot between each project because they tend to cool down a little bit. If you have the Heidi Swap Mink Machine, it stays hot the whole time and you don't have to kind of give it some time to heat up. Now I'm running it through a second time just to make sure that it really transferred onto that stamped image. And when we take it out the other side, you'll see the beautiful results that you get. Now when I take the foil off this time, you'll see that I get some foil where I didn't intend for it to be, right above the L's in hello. That's because some embossing powder got there, some stray embossing powder. Never fear if this happens to you, you can just take your craft knife and gently scratch off the foil and the embossing powder. After you've scratched it all off, you just use an eraser to smooth it back out and nobody will ever know it's there. I do this trick a lot whenever I get some, a little bit of ink where I didn't want it to be. Now I wanted to show you one more color combination. This time, again, I have the flowers heat embossed on the bottom two thirds of the white piece and then the hello image above that. This is a melon colored foil. I'm putting the pretty side up over the flowers. And then I'm using a rose gold color for the hello. I just think this is a beautiful color of foil. And I will fold that typing paper around it. Now if the typing paper seems to be too thick, if you're finding that not all of the foil is transferring onto your heat embossed image, you can try a folded piece of parchment paper. Or you can try skipping the folded piece of carrier sheet entirely. Or you could try running it through once with the carrier sheet so the foil gets stuck partially to your images and then roll, run it through once without the carrier sheet. So this takes a little bit of experimenting the first time that you do it with your laminator. However, once you figure it out, you'll always know what works for you. And there we have some melon and rose gold foil onto the white cardstock. Okay, so now here are some other options. Here's the, the melon and the rose gold. Absolutely beautiful colors here. The next one is a matte turquoise or teal color with some opal. This is just gorgeous in real life, but doesn't photograph or video very well. Here is the turquoise with the royal blue. And then finally, the one that I'm focusing on for the rest of the video, and that is the silver with the gold. This is just a nice classic combination. I think this would be good for wedding cards too. Okay, so now let's go ahead and finish the rest of the card. I kept the rest of the card super simple for this. I am going to go ahead and I trimmed the sides down a little bit on this. So I took about a quarter of an inch off the side of this. I'm putting some uh, adhesive on the back and adhering it to a top folding four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. So you'll see a little bit hanging off the side here that we need to cover up. I really wanted a gold strip down the left side of the card. You could create your own gold foil cardstock with your foil and heat embossing on just some cardstock, but instead I'm saving time by using some gold foil cardstock that I bought along with a thin strip of turquoise foiled cardstock. And I'm going to put that right along where those two meet up. Now this cardstock is from Die Cuts with a View. It's a six by six pa uh, pad, but I know Basil has some gorgeous foil cardstocks also. So I'm just going to trim the excess off and there we have our simple card. It's nice and flat, so it'll mail nicely. Now I just did decide to take some Hero Arts blue envelopes that matched our cards and do a little bit of stamping on it. So I'm arranging my stamps how I want them to be kind of in the bottom left corner of our envelope. Then I'll press the acrylic block on it. I'm going to use a light blue ink to stamp this on the front of the envelope. I love to stamp my envelopes so that they perfectly match the cards and they're ready to go whenever it's time to mail it. I also decided to do a little bit of stamping on the back flap of the envelope. You can decorate these envelopes however you want. Sky's the limit and while you have the supplies out, you might as well do the envelopes. So I actually store my envelopes with the card now. So I kind of tuck the card into the envelope and put them in my little organization system and they're ready to go when I need to send a card to a friend. Actually, these cards are going to go to one of my um, kids' teachers. 
So there you have some tips for adding foil to stamped images. I really encourage you to experiment with what you have. See what works for you. Once you figure it out, you'll be good to go and you can add foiling to lots of projects. If you would like to learn more about these products, please check the YouTube description below or you can head over to ellenhudson.com. Thanks so much for watching and we hope you'll return again soon.